We've learned a lot since 2016, and you know there's still much more to learn, but I want to walk you through what we've done since 2016, um, because election integrity and privacy and safety of our people are at the top of our concerns. So since 2016, again, we've hired more than 30,000 people to fact check and to look at harmful content. We very have transparently published our community standards. We work with more than 55 organizations in 45 languages around the world to ensure integrity of our content. We've also made it um, easy for people themselves to flag content. So if you as a user see something that you don't think is correct, maybe you think it's fake, it's harmful, you can flag it. There's a way for you to flag it, and one of the fact-checking organizations will see if it's true, and they can tag it to, to, to say that it is um, potentially false or if it's a misleading piece of content. Um, so we have done a significant amount of work in that. Since 2016, we've had more than 200 elections around the world. Uh, most recently in Latin America, we had elections in Argentina. Um, they've gone very well, and I'm very confident that they will continue to go well. So, you know, there is more that can always be done. There's more that can be done within Facebook as well in, in, in ensuring we have representation of people, of perspectives in our own company. We work very hard at that. Great, you know, Brazil is so important for us globally and uh, it's, it's a privilege to be leading this team across Latin America here in Brazil, which is our headquarters for Latin America. Most people don't know that. Um, Brazil is a country that Aside from the user base, we have more than 130 million Brazilians across our platforms today. So aside from that um, is a, a country that we invest significantly in. So it's important to know and for your viewers to know that Facebook does not compete with banks. Actually, many banks, many financial services and fintechs use Facebook and our, and our tools to reach customers and actually to promote their own businesses. Now, why does Facebook not compete? You know, if we're talking about, um, let's say, payments, right? Payments, we are not a financial institution. We are a, we are a pass-through, and that's very important to know. And so, you know, at some point, we may work with banks or with financial institutions, but in that sense, we are in no way competing with banks or financial institutions. So the mission of Facebook is to empower individuals to connect the world and create community. And an important part of that is small businesses. So we wanted to understand how in Brazil, a very important country for Facebook, we were impacting small businesses. Uh, it was great to find out that uh, globally, more than 140 million businesses use our free tools and services today across the Facebook family of apps and services to grow their businesses. Now, within Brazil, nearly three quarters of small businesses say that our free tools and services let them reach more customers, have a greater economic impact, grow their footprint, and we're really excited that we can be a part of that. There's a great example that I, I love and I'd love to share with you. Um, last year, I, I had the privilege of meeting a woman named Jassy. So Jassy is from Rio de Janeiro, and she has a young son named Machias. Machias went up to her one day and said, Mom, why are there no dolls that look like me? Okay, Machias is a, is a young black boy living in Rio de Janeiro. And she thought about it, realized it was true, and created a doll. She posted it on Instagram. And because of that creation and that post, Jossie began to sell dolls. She left her job to become an entrepreneur, very successful, and has since not only had an online presence, but she's opened physical stores in Rio de Janeiro. And Wow. Wow.